Hey everybody, welcome into the first edition of Locked on Astros, a post-game edition, and we'll hear from Joe Espada, not here on this show, but we'll hear what he had to say about why he put Singleton in for Myers and what happened in this first loss as the Astros go down 0-1 on the season to the New York Yankees in the home opener. Let's go. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. To Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. Hey everybody, welcome into this edition of Locked On Astros. Yes, the Astros did not win. It is not the outcome we wanted but we're going to talk about it anyways because win lose or well we don't have draws or ties this isn't soccer but win or lose we are here we're your team every single day make sure you check us out on apple google spotify wherever you get your podcasts we are free and easy to listen to and again we're your team every day today's episode is brought to you by game time game time is an amazing app go check out game time Use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Um, it is a great app. I love it. You can find me at HM Wheelhouse on X Instagram and TikTok. You can find me at Strohs411 on X Instagram and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. Eric the Heisman. Eric the Man Heisman is not here tonight. He will be back. We may do another episode or a couple um, this weekend since it is opening weekend. Who knows? Just stick around and you will see. But look, um, I was there. The game was exciting. Um, it was it was a playoff like atmosphere. I actually got to meet a couple friends of mine from New York that I've been friends with on Twitter. I guess now X, um, probably the last three or four seasons, and we finally met in person. That was a really really cool thing. And I made a little announcement with another podcast that I'm doing and working on next week. And we're calling it back to the bullpen with myself and Mike Stanton. So you have to check it out. Um, if you're on social media, check me out. I'm advertising it there. And on X, you'll see it. I'm um, called back to the bullpen with Mike Stanton. That comes out April 4th. So I hope you guys jump over there and check that out. That is not a daily podcast like this one. This is just one day a week. But it is covering the whole league. It's not just Astro stuff. It's everything in between. So yeah, okay. I'm I'm delaying a little bit. Um, I'm I'm burying the lead. Um, what is the lead? Is is the lead? Um, Joe Espada putting in Singleton for Myers. Is the lead Jake Myers um, going one for two and, and hitting a home run? Um, is the lead Fromber Valdez? just leaving way too many men on base and walking. Um, what's the lead? Is the lead going down 0-1? And then we see the Rangers did a walk-off win and win 4-3 to in the bottom of the 10th inning where they had a banner fail. Their banner looked like it came from Fanatics and not an actual banner company, but I digress. Um, <laughs> is the lead um, 10 walks? Ryan says is the lead. Um, Joseph Nunez is right in the narrative here, bringing in Seth Martinez. Yeah, that was brutal. I don't know. I mean, is the lead Rafael Montero giving up a home run? I mean, is the lead Ryan Presley not looking sharp at all? Um, 10 extra base running for doing nothing. Yeah, look, look, look. Okay. We could pile on this team all we want to after a first game loss and talk about how the team continues to not win at home and all those things. But I think we need to stop looking at things through the lens of 2023 because this is a different season. And let me tell you why this is a different season. Let's let's look at the box score here, okay? what the Astros did to start the game that they didn't do a lot last year. Okay. And need I remind you last year, we played from behind a lot. Our pitchers gave up runs early a lot. Now I would say, and I would contend 
that the inverse happened today. Okay. Um, usually what would happen with Houston and y'all can recall this is the other team would start and they would get three, four, five, six runs, and we would be in the hole. Now we started out three runs in the first, a run in the second, four to nothing. You think going into going into the fifth inning, you're up four to nothing, no big deal, right? Yeah, no big deal. We scored four runs. We scored early. We scored often. We scored first. That's what we were looking for last year. But what we didn't count on (laughs) was the Yankees coming back and the Yankees scoring three and then one and then one and then them winning by the total of five to four. The Astros had 13 hits. They only had seven Ks. The Yankees had eight hits. They had 10 Ks. But what was the difference? Nine Yankee walks. Nine. Volpe was walked three times. Um, Trevino walked once. Rizzo walked once. Rizzo was also hit by a pitch. Aaron Judge walked once. Juan Soto walked twice. And Torres walked once. I, I mean, you cannot have your pitcher, your starting pitcher, going in there And now, look, he came out, he looked good. I mean, he didn't give up a run until the fifth inning, okay? But he did end up giving up three earned runs, five hits, six walks on five Ks. The walks slowed down a bit. Martinez came in and gave up a walk. None of the runs were charged to him. Montero, walk, hit, and run. Um, Presley. Two hits, one earned run, one walk, one K. Hater came in, and man, Hater came in, and this dude struck out three people. He struck out the side. He did a great job, and he gave you a chance. But the Astros just did not finish the game. But let's talk about Jake Myers. Jake Myers came into the season. And I picked him as my breakout performer of the year. (laughs) And just like this game and the way it ended, I checked my fantasy baseball team. The team where I picked Jake Myers, I did pick him last. I left Jake Myers on the bench. (laughs) Now, that's pretty frustrating. And so... They had Jake Myers, but they put him on the bench. And we're going to we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what Joe Espada said and why they put Jake Myers on the bench after we talk about it, after we talk to y'all about FanDuel. All right, y'all, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed like the University of Houston Cougars, it's time to go dancing. No, not dancing with the stars, dancing with the hoops. That's right. Dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 wins. $5 $5 bet, $200 back. That's amazing. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can pick who's going to win it all, like the U of H Cougars, baby, whose house? Cougs house. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. That's right, FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Check it out today. Hey, guys, and I want to make sure that y'all check out. I'm going to um, put an actual link to the um, courage to be.org foundation um, website that we are trying to raise $4,000 for the Courage to Be Foundation. I need y'all to check that out today. And the actual website is right here. Um, on this banner. 
So go to the courage to be at betterworld.org campaign. We are looking to build a facility trying to raise $4,000 for the kids in Dominican Republic. Once they build that facility, I'm going to go down there and be a part of the ribbon cutting ceremony. So please check that out and give your money today. Thank you so much. All right. So look, let's hear what Mr. Joe Espada said about, and then I'll get to some of y'all's comments here in a second. Let's call this our Yo Joe segment. Oh, here it is. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. Joe Espada, Yo Joe. That's right. Uh, wherever there's freedom, there's Joe Espada, Yo Joe. Now, the first thing we're going to read is a quote about Joe's mom. Maybe lessen the blow so y'all take it easy on the guy, okay? Rookie manager today, about his first game his parents attended. He said, my mom, she's probably going to sit and second guess every move I've made. But you know I love her. I love her for that reason. She is the best. And um, basically, Miriam Espada will not be alone. Blowing a four-run lead against one of Houston's most hated rivals will trigger any kind of criticism. We know you guys are very critical about that. I was critical about it. Why would you remove Jake Myers, who hit a 411-foot shot? Then you put in John Singleton, who hit a ball four feet. It just did not make sense. Now, this was Singleton's response to going up there and swinging and, and getting the ground out. And then I'll give you what Espada said. I think I was a little anxious there, especially being the first at bat of the year. Next time I go out there, I hope I'll be a bit more prepared. I was a little aggressive. My plan was correct in what I was looking for. I was just a little too aggressive. This is what Espada had hoped, okay? Espada for the organization is here so that so thin so because they are thin in position player depth and so he provides what they say is the most capable left-handed hitting option on the bench hitting Dubon instead of Singleton could have been a choice but the Astros clearly wanted the platoon advantage that's exactly why Singleton was on the is on the team just to get those at bats in high leverage situations when the game is on the line, put a good swing, give you a good at bat and give you a chance to win. A spot said, I still have to put each player in a position to succeed. You go into the series prepared to put every individual in a position to succeed the homer in the second. That's what I want to see out of Jake. And that's what Jake, that's the Jake we've seen all spring. But in that particular moment against that particular pitcher, I felt like Singy, meaning Singleton, was the right matchup in that particular spot. Afterwards, Myers said a spot that doesn't need to communicate that to me. He's the manager, and whatever he chooses to do, I'm absolutely for. So, at the end of the day, it's it's a call that Joe Espada made. And I joking, I made the the offhand remark, and I wasn't being serious, but. I said that felt like the ghost of Dusty Baker because last year we constantly had moves that we, that we, that would leave us with our heads scratching our heads. And um, it's just one of those things where you're like, why would you pull a guy that has a home run? And, you know, the pitcher for the Yankees, Loisaga, gives up a slugging percentage or OPS. I think it's OPS. 80 point 80 or 88 points higher to left-handed batters than right-handed batters. I understand playing the numbers. I just still find it hard to believe that Singleton is that guy. I just, I know Singleton is there for a reason and they know baseball better than me. And they are the, they, you know, Joe spot is a manager. I'm not, um, um, he is on the roster, I just said, because they're thin in position players and he's a left-handed at bat and they were going to give him, because he's on his team, they're going to give him chances. See, if Dusty Baker was still managing, we would hear, oh, Dusty's up to doing Dusty things. Well, Joe Espada and the numbers told them that that is Singleton's spot. And until Singleton is not on this team and until Singleton is not an option, Joe Espada is not going to be afraid to put his guys in the position 
to be successful. And that will come with criticism. And um, just, just so we're, we're on the same wavelength here. um, I'm not going to be ultra critical so much. So that every little thing that happens, I'm going to blame on Joe. You've got to put the blame on Singleton. Singleton was put in a position to succeed and he failed. If Singleton goes in that position and he hits a home run, we're not talking about that today. Right now, we're talking about, look, Joe Espada believed in this guy and he went in there and did the job. Wow, great move. Or that was a gutsy call, but it worked out. And that's why you make that move. So there's a million other things that could have happened where we're spinning this a different way. So, yeah, it's frustrating to lose the way we lost. It's literally the first game of the season. Yankees fans were leaving the stadium with their chest puffed out with so much vigor. You would have thought this poor, this one guy, poor guy, he's seen, he's seen so much Yankee losing in the last <laughs> 10 years at the, or, I mean, at the hands of the Astros, this, this guy's walking out of Minute Maid Park and he's like, yeah, we want to know. Look at that. And I'm just like going, oh, my gosh. And he's yelling at like everybody he sees. And he walks by me and we make eye contact. And I'm like, and I'm like, what are you yelling about? He's like, we won. We're, we beat y'all. We're up one and oh. And I was like, have you ever beat us in a playoff series? It's like, it doesn't matter. We beat you. We're winning one to nothing. And I go, nobody cares about the regular season. Nobody cares if you don't win the last game of the year. Y'all can't even beat us in the playoffs when it matters. Have your consolation prize, Yankee fan. And I said, you know what? How about get to the playoffs and beat us in the playoffs? And he was like, we're still one and oh. And he was so, I just stopped. And I was just having, I was just, <laughs> I was having a blast. But I will say this. I met a lot of Yankees fans, right? Um, no, man, I didn't. I didn't whoop any. Look, I'm not a fighter, guys. I'm the last guy. I am the last guy that you will see getting in a fight. OK, um, I don't I don't fight, man. I'm I'm not a fighter, dude. I'm a lover, man. I, I don't I don't I like fighting over sports is like when I see people fight it like at games. I think that is the most stupid caveman just idiotic thing ever like why are you gonna fight somebody over a sporting event like how freaking i don't know like look <laughs> i told y'all i was like i was almost i was chased pretty much out of my seat game five of the alcs after abreu hit garcia <laughs> and i can just tell you right now i am definitely not going to be a fighter but look here's the deal man I met some I met some really good Yankees fans and I can tell you this they were like man this is my first time at Texas and you guys are so nice <laughs> they were like why are y'all so hospitable I was like this is Texas man like the word Texas comes from Tejas from comes from the from the um Hassani Indians which means friendship and that's what the word Tejas was um this is a little Texas history for you I feel like I'm teaching class right now but yeah, man, a lot of Yankees fans, they absolutely loved being here today. So good job on y'all. And they will, talk, let me tell you, they will talk crap. Yankees fans will talk crap and they'll talk it up. And But you know what they like? They like if you give it back. They like it if you kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But at the end, they'll freaking give you a hug or a high five. It's all good, man. I'm not fighting over sports. Like, dude, if you want to come at me and with your chest puffed out and you want to fight me, I am the last guy. Like, you're wasting your time. I'll just put my hands down and walk away because I'm not doing it. I'm not fighting, especially with the team that we absolutely own. Look, it was kind of like a Father's Day for us. You know, our, you know, we're the Yankees daddies. Um, we're getting to see our kids come to town. Um, I've got friends trying to call me while I'm doing a show. <laughs> um, hold on. Let me, let me respond to this. <laughs> Let's see. Oh man. Um, uh, I've got friends blowing up my phone. They're like, are you still out? We're trying to find you. And I'm like, dude, I'm doing the show. So anyways, um, 
So look, I've got a little confession, guys. Uh, this is this is kind of a funny day. So been a long day. Um, was at the stadium all day, just a lot of energy, meeting people, um, doing some interviews. You'll you'll see those pop up on the um, on the channel this weekend. A great a great experience. Um, but earlier, I had this. Um, I was I was gonna start the show, I believe, at nine. And I just kind of I kind of sat here and I kicked my head back. And man, if I guess I'm getting old, I freaking I, I have a confession. I, I, I feel like we know each other well enough. I can share this with y'all. I flipping fell asleep, boys and girls. <laughs> I fell asleep, and I'm sorry I'm getting on so late, but I was like, oh, you know what? No harm, no foul. Tomorrow's good Friday. Pretty much everybody's off, so hopefully everybody's up. But again. Looks like Supreme Panda is off to bed. He's no longer hanging out with us, but thank you all for tuning in to Locked on Astros tonight. Um, so the offense, I think, did enough. Um, they should have won this game, but Kyle Tucker recognized that they should have done more. Um, they had opportunities that they missed. Clearly, clearly they missed these opportunities, and they should have done more damage with the runners that they provided on base. And, um, let's see how many they left on base. They were three for 10 with runners in scoring position, which isn't horrible. They left nine on base. I mean, they've got to basically, they've got to score those runners. They've got to put those in. I've missed the show because I fell asleep also. Hey, <laughs> you the WH town. I appreciate it. Look, man, um, you know, um, man, what a long day. Let me let me see if I get some of y'all's comments here. David, so do you worry more about the rotation of the bullpen? You know, if Fromber cannot get his crap together, if Fromber cannot go out there and pitch a game and not walk 8,000 batters, and the starters absolutely have to go six innings and give quality baseball. The Astros probably should have scored more than four runs, but four runs it should be enough. If your pitching is locking it down, the four runs should be enough. I'm I don't know. I don't know if I'm more concerned about the bullpen. Well, Montero looks like he's gonna Montero. That guy came in and gave up a home run. Like I was like, oh, here we go. And oh my gosh, the words that were flying through that stadium when Montero gave up that home run. Um Scott Taylor. Um, I'm sorry, Scott Taylor. Taylor Scott came in. You know, he got a strikeout, had a walk. Taylor Scott's got good stuff. Hater locked it down. Presley looked, did not look good. Presley hasn't looked great all spring. I I want to know this. Is Presley telling us the truth? I'm serious. Yeah, David, um, I think there are a lot of questions with both. The bottom line is they have to perform well. <laughs> That's what they get paid for, right? I mean, that's, but, you know, that's why you have teams that win 60 games a year and teams that win 100 games a year because some of them perform and some of them don't. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, look, his, okay, let me tell you that his location is always due to his arm slot where he's, when he's rotating, what kind of spin he's getting, where the ball's coming out of his hand because his delivery is so is so dependent on where he puts the ball, where the ball comes out of his hand. Unlike, I mean, every pitcher, that's the case, but Fromber's is seems to be more difficult and more intricate because, and the reason why I know that is because Mike Stanton has explained that on this show. I'm not saying that Presley's going to be bad all year. I'm just saying Presley hasn't looked good lately. Presley didn't have a great spring. Presley didn't look good today on the mound. Um, Fromber was all over the place. Um, Montero gave up that home run. I was really hoping that Montero would, it was an even number year and maybe Montero will do good in even number years or something. I don't know. Um, does that mean Josh Hader get the day off? He had three strikeouts. Let's see. He had three strikeouts and how many pitches did he have thrown? He only threw 19 pitches. I mean, 13 pitches. So I don't know what the deal is. Hopefully you put your team in a situation 
where you don't need to use him, so naturally you would rest him. But look, if he's feeling good, why not put him out there? Um, and remember, we're without Abreu one more game, and that also is a reason. <laughs> I heard someone go, where's Abreu? And, so, and someone else, yeah. and this, these were random random things. I was here at the stadium. Some guy yells, where's Abreu? And the other guy goes, hey, idiot, he's suspended. <laughs> like, uh, it was like, there were so many things that I caught an ear on, random conversations. I don't know what it was, but my senses were like really, really, I, w- I was really listening to stuff around me. And I, I caught some pretty funny conversations. Um, I caught a Yankee fan and an Astros fan, like talking smack to each other. And they, they were basically saying what I was saying. They were like, you know, you can be this in the right. And it was like, yeah, man, the last two series, we've really had your number. And he was like, but did you ever have our number in the playoffs? Why does it matter? Who cares about the regular season? So they're going back and forth. And so um, Brian and Brady wasn't perfect either. You're right. No. And that's the thing. So these guys got to find a groove. Pitching is a rhythm. Pitching is a mindset. Baseball is a mental game. You can have all the physical tools in the world, but if you can't lock it down between the ears, if you cannot find the groove or the spot or the comfortability on the mound, to where you feel like that is your kingdom and nobody can disrupt that, then you're going to have results like you had today. And Fromber has got to absolutely wipe his mind clean. He needs to visit his sports psychiatrist. And yeah, spring doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying what they've been doing lately. Okay. At the end of the day, let's do this. Let's, let's get back to level ground. It's one game. It's 161 games that we have left in the season. The sky is not falling. The end is not nigh. And the Astros dynasty run or dynastic run is not over. We just have a little bit of concerns in the beginning that we're not used to seeing. I think this offense will be fine. I think water will find its level with the pitching. The relievers and these starters will do what needs to get done. And I believe the victories will come more often and you'll start seeing some winning at home. I still think the Astros can take the next three. I'm not impressed with their next three starters. I'm just not. Rodon, the dude's a mess. He's an overhyped signing. He hasn't done crap since he's got to the Yankees. We're not going to see Garrett Cole. And so let's... Let's look at this. Um, let's see. Uh, Friday, Rodon versus Javier. I have Javier in that game. Stroman versus Brown. Sorry, Stroman, no. Um, Schmidt versus, I believe it's probably going to be JP France or Ronel Blanco. I would throw Blanco in that game. If I'm being honest, I'm throwing Blanco out there. Why the heck not? Why not put Blanco out there? And so um, David says our pitching isn't any better. Well, we've, we've got injury issues and they definitely have to perform better. Um, I know they discuss running more bases, but two, but two double plays to close out the game shouldn't have happened. Yeah, that's look. Bottom line is folks. Ro- <laughs> Colts like Rodon sucks. <laughs> well, look, here's the deal. We love the Astros. We love you guys, the MVP. Several of y'all met Eric today. Several of y'all. I fist bumped several people, and no one get like, I met about five people. They're like, hey, what's up, H-Town? Love the show, and they gave me knuckles. They didn't tell me who they were. It could have been some of y'all in the chat. I don't know, but we love meeting you guys. I don't think I'm going to be at any of the other games this weekend. I know I'll be there April 12th. I'm going to try to get to a game before that. Oh, um, the April 12th and 13th weekend hat club will be setting up a pop-up store. Um, I'm, I'm looking at doing some stuff with them. Um, I'll let you know about that. And so thank y'all for tuning in to locked on Astros. I'm H town wheelhouse. Eric will be back and we might do some weekend, um, pods. We're off tomorrow. It's good Friday. And it is, um, Easter weekend. I know those of y'all that are of the Christian faith are celebrating the Easter weekend. It's a very important holiday. And so I hope that y'all get to spend time with your family 
this weekend. And remember that no matter what happens, um, we got your back. We're going to be here no matter the result because we not only love our Astros, but we love you guys and girls as fans. Y'all are the real MVPs. All right. So before I go, you've got to go make sure you put scrap iron on the contest um, wall for the Phil Garner photo. And I figure, I think there is one more thing before I actually exit this podcast. Let me make sure I'm not, I feel like I'm missing something. Um, The Phil Garner picture. Okay. That is right. Okay. So the Phil Garner picture, go check that out. Type in scrap iron. I will roll with that and I will pick some winners. I'll pick that and I'll let y'all know tomorrow. All right. So great. Y'all have time. Music sounds off. What's going on with the music? But that's all I got, kids. Y'all have a good one. We love y'all. Y'all are awesome. Let's go win the next three. Why? Suck. I'm out.